Hello and welcome back. So now that we have a functioning, kind of functioning uh, system here, let's look at the weaknesses on the login page. So the first weakness is the information that you give. Now we're going to look at brute force attack later on, but before we go into that, let's just look at the information you give a user when they type something. So at this point, if I click, just click login, it says wrong password here, okay? But before we get to that, let's examine the file that we have. So make sure that you download the uh, you download the files uh, in the description. I, I got lost there. So if you go to the PHP my admin, so the file that is included there is a database file security db so in there if you've actually imported it there's the users table and it's got a few users in here so there's john there's mary so these are the two that we're going to try and use so there's a an email here that's correct which is john and there's mary at yahoo.com so if for example here i type in the correct john at yahoo.com and then click login you see that it tells me wrong password. Now let's try and actually enter the correct password, which is password here. And I would type password like so and hit login. You will see that uh, it says wrong email. So at this point, an attacker is going to know you're giving out too much information. It may look like it's a correct thing to do, but it isn't. If you if either the email or the password is wrong, you should just tell them wrong email or password. They shouldn't know which of the two is actually wrong. Because if they know that, we're going to discuss this during our brute force attack, but somebody could be trying out different emails. And then the moment he sees that, um, let's see if this is a wrong email here, wrong password, it's going to, what's going to say wrong email. So I know that my email is definitely wrong. So I can do this and try that. I don't know, email at email.com, wrong password. So when it tells me wrong password, I know, okay, uh, email, I'm actually getting a little bit confused here, but the point is, <laughs> the point is that when you have a system where it tells you which of the two is wrong, like wrong email, wrong password. This is not a good system at all. So this is the login page, the login page that I've uh, opened here. And I'm going to, I'm going to change a few things. Now, session start here starts is required because we need the session in order to log in a user because we're going to set the user ID into the session. That's why we need that session start. But now that we're using the index page to do everything, then we must move the session start to there because it's required on every single page. So let's do session start there like so and cut it out everywhere else. So I'm going to remove this session start anywhere it is like, for example, maybe the sign up page, remove that. And I go back to the, um, I don't know, home page. Is it there? Probably not. Okay, so we'll save that. Sign up, save that. Okay, great. So let's go back to our login page. So what I'm saying is don't say wrong email or wrong password. Just say wrong email or password like that. This should be the only message you show the user regardless what's going on with the login here, okay? So that's the only error you're allowed to give. So I've replaced both of those and just to reflect wrong user, wrong email or password, regardless which one is wrong. So whatever I type here, I get uh, wrong. Let me type an actual email here. What's going on? Yeah, there are certain times it doesn't actually work. And that's because when we get here, um, 
to this point if we don't have anything i should put an else here so go down here and put an else statement and then put the same thing error is equal to like so here okay that way we get proper errors let me resend okay wrong email or password so regardless what i type here wrong email or password email here let me type a proper email there and there we go i just get wrong email or password this is good because the uh the attacker will not know which one of them they have correct among the two okay so that's one thing so now uh the thing we need here is remember the connection information here uh we don't need this anymore because we can connect directly just like we did for our oop situation there so what i need to do is get all of this okay all of this right here from the top i will move this error to here like so okay like that so I'll get all this information that you would put when you click post up to down here and i will copy for now i don't want to cut yet go to the functions <clears throat> excuse me and then right here we'll create a function called uh, i don't know create we are going to create a user so i'll call it create like this and then i'll paste all that code in here so let me just indent it a little bit so that we can clearly see what's going on like that okay so just like that create we've done that but <clears throat> as usual the connection we c we already have a way to connect and we would do it like this where is this um wait a minute on the db read okay so we don't even need that what we need to create is a db write function here in the database so i'm just going to create that put it there and then it will be db write like so okay so once we connect we're just writing to the database we don't need to get any results so all we're going to do is just check um, if the query was correct i'll do this if result then I'll return true. If not, I will return false. Like this. And that's it. That's db write. So we have reading, we have writing, and uh, we're done. So here, all I need to do is go down here. So all this remains the same. This remains the same here. Uh, post email, post there, and a good thing to do is not never to use global variables because that puts your system at risk as well. So remove all these uh, posts like this. Let me select all that. Let's just change them to remove the underscore like so, so that they become not the global post there. And then I will put this post in there like that, so that we bring it, it, bring it in from the outside and bring it here. Okay, so everything else remains the same. All this remains the same and then this is a security feature for add slashes so i'm going to talk about this a little bit more when we do when we deal with uh, sql injection but uh, that's one way to do it but there are many ways we're going to see all that and then in here we're going to get user okay wait a minute oh actually we are signing in here so this is a uh, login instead of create so user login so then let's come down here do that check all this wrong email or password and then if things go well we're going to do all this now here where we are saving to the database we don't want to do this at all this query should be added to a function wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute okay so what we want to do here is say this query this uh read like so 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, it's db read. db underscore read like that. So this db read if result like that. And then we fetch the result. So the result itself will contain the row that we want. So row is going to be equal to the first result that we get because we are getting an array there, like so. Okay, and then we put things in perspective. We assign it to a session variable here, and then we relocate the user to the index page. Otherwise, we say wrong email or password. And then the error here, we have to return the error. So I'm going to go up to this point. After that, wait a minute, okay. Just here, I'm going to say return error. That way, if there are any errors, we're going to see them. Okay. Yep, that does it. So this filter validate email will tell us if this email is actually correct. That's how you validate an email address. Uh, you use filter var, and then you put in your variable, which is the email, and then you say filter validate email as the constant to use, because filter var is used for many things. And this constant just tells it that we are trying to evaluate an email address. So we put a, an exclamation point because if it's not correct, then we will complain here. All right, so everything else is okay. So I'm just breezing through this because I want the login system to conform to what we have. That way we can utilize it and do things like access uh, giving to users. So I just want us to sign in a user here. So once we are done with this, let's go back to the actual login page. So here, all we need to do is remove all this. And also in the function here, we don't want to be uh, relocating people here. So I, once we do this, we don't want to do this here, the header location. So let's remove that. What I want to do instead is return I just want to return an empty string like that. Return error or return empty string like so. Okay, good. I can return false if I want to or return true if I want to. But let's go back here. And once we get here, the header location will be here. That's the only thing we have to leave here. Everything else should be removed like so. Okay. So all I need now is to create a post is equal to new uh, post class like that, that post class. And then once we are done with that, we're just going to say the error is going to be equal to uh, post login. But then in here, we will put our post variable like that. And then we'll ask the question here, is the error empty? If it isn't, then we don't redirect. So we'll say if um, error is equal to empty string, like that. So if it's an empty string, then we are good to go. If it isn't, then we don't redirect like this. Okay, so wait a second here. Let's see if everything will work and we'll get our errors because our errors are going to be echoed down here. And then let me just put the error here and set it to an empty string just above there so that we don't get an error down there. So there we go. Okay, great. Now let's come back here and I'm going to refresh my page to make sure nothing has gone wrong. So it's saying call to undefined method post login. Well, that is true because I create I created the wrong. Um, this is the wrong class. It's supposed to be the user class. Okay, so let's say user here and user there. So these are common mistakes. So let's try that again. Mm -hmm. Refresh, resend. Okay, so things are working out now. So let's try John. We'll say john at yahoo.com. 
and uh, password. Let's make sure our password is correct and log in. And just like that, we are sent to the home page. So everything is working fine. So we are able to log in a user. So in the next video, we'll look at how we can give a user specific access depending on their level of access. So if there's, there's an admin and there's a, a normal user, there's an editor, we'll give them very specific uh, access because this is very important for security. You're not supposed to, uh, if for example, you have a house, you don't give keys to everyone in the house. You give specific people that you trust the keys and to only have access to the places that you want uh, them to work in. Okay, so we'll do a similar thing on the website. I'll see you in the next video.